Tonight's show, questions and answers, and as always, a little bit of tournament talk. So stick around for this edition of Tackle Shop Live starting right now. to another show tackle shop live my name is mike acord and to my right is george acord and to our far right the man the myth the legend corbin cg got what's oh. the g stand for oh gotta get my flogger out <laughs> oh, I see you, I see you. Oh, yeah. there you go <laughs> oh yeah what's up everybody how you doing mark john how you doing good evening raymond james hawks in the house how you doing my friend russell fuller joseph what's up buddy man we got another great show for you tonight this is our famous question and answer show and we got some great tournament talk to go over. We got a couple of announcements we're going to make. And, uh, man, glad everybody's here. And, um, man, what a what an exciting week we had. We were uh, we all got to fish this past weekend. Um, me and George, as everybody knows, fished the Conowingo Bass Open Series and um, had a great time there. We had a great turnout. We had uh, uh, 26 boats, I believe, in that tournament. Um, it was good. It was held down on the Conowinga pool and, uh, man, that was a good time. We, uh, we went down there with a plan, me and George, um, we had a nice little game plan started out in the morning and had to scratch the whole entire game plan. <laughs> <laughs> it just, it didn't work out for us right away in the morning. So we had a ASAP. We did the scratch all Yeah. Yeah. We weren't going to die on that there pattern. So we, um, we, 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 uh, thought it out we, we we remembered some stuff from before so we went and 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 tried out and checked out for some different things and we found another another area and worked it pretty hard and end up catching some fish up there um so you know it was it was a good deal it was fun it was a good time uh it was hot uh man is it hot last couple of days have been brutal jeez so, but luckily we had a nice wind. We, you know, it was a bad wind. It was a south wind um, and it was building during the day. Um, but anyway, we had 20, I think we had 26 boats in the tournament. Um, and uh, the, the weights were pretty good. There was a lot of, there was a lot of small mouth caught as, as, as expected. Um, there was a few uh, large mouth caught. Um, he has the numbers here somewhere. I don't. I don't have them, you know, large mouth and small mouth, but it was a lot, lot more small mouth than, than large mouth caught. We had our lunker was a large mouth. We had a three, seven large mouth. Uh, lunker for the tournament was a three, eight, eight, uh, caught by Vic and Logan. They had lunker, I believe. Yeah. Three, eight, eight, um, uh, fish, but first place in that tournament went to John and TJ. They had 15, uh, 0.19 pounds. Second place was Vic and Logan. They had Lunker and uh, 14.32. Uh, third place was Ernie um, and Charles Leapart. Uh, they had 12.64. And then me and George were fourth with uh, 12.58. And the last place money was TJ and Dave um, with 12.41. 
there was a, another 12 pounder right there. There was a bunch of 11s that were, you know, right there. It was everybody was right there. Uh, there was a lot of fish caught. Congratulations to uh, John and TJ. Way to go, guys. Um, um, Mikey. Yeah, we forgot somebody. What's that? What's that twenty dollar bill doing laying on your yeah, computer? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I'm just kind of saying, what's that? What's that twenty doing? What's yeah. the story behind that? So, you know, we had Calcutta bet in the tournament. Uh, <laughs> our our buddy Brian Setlock uh, and 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 Dave, um, they they were they won everything last year. They were kicking butt down there last year, and and he kept biting me down and biting me down. And I said, I'm coming down. I'm coming down. And so. So we and George decided to come down and I and uh, and and we he, we put a, a little side bet, twenty dollars side bet. I got the money. I got the money, Brian. I know you're watching, <laughs> Seti. I know you're watching, pal. Right here it is. Oops. So um, <laughs> we. Uh, that's all I really want. I don't care if I came in second to last, as long as Seti right. was in last place. <laughs> 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 you know, it was because bragging rights are everything. You know that. Oh yeah, I trash mean, that, talk, that, man. That, uh, you know that that that's what it's all about. Trash but talk. It was a good time, and for anybody who uh, was thinking about trying to jump into a tournament or a derby here coming up uh, next week, I uh, um I think it's a Sunday. It might be a sun Saturday tournament. It's either Saturday or Sunday next weekend. I have the uh, applications here. You can go to Conowinga Bass Sunday Open. Is it Sunday? Yeah, yeah. Conowinga yeah, Bass Open Series on the Facebook. And uh, you can check that out and and come down and fish. I mean, it's fun. It's, 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 it's a fun. It's a fun circuit. Yep. Uh, and it looks to me like it's going to be pretty competitive. Yeah, I mean, they got some really good hammers down there, uh, but you know, uh, it's for everybody, and anybody can catch them down there. You know, it's it's going to get tougher and tougher and tougher, but and and that equals the field out real nice. Uh, for everybody so don't be afraid come on down you know ha uh, have at it it's a, it's a really good time i'm hoping to be there again for the next one um just because i'm like to have fun down there it's yeah. it's, it's a good time so um um anyway so brian and dave thank you for putting that tournament on um oh the other thing about that tournament is if you fish five of them out of the seven uh you qualify for a championship and and what me and george are doing for the championship is we're matching um five dollars per boat um all the way up to a thousand dollars so if they get enough people to participate you could get an extra thousand dollar bonus and with 26 boats it's going to happen real easy you know it's gonna it's gonna be a breeze there'll be an extra thousand dollars in the in the um championship pot um so for sure uh come on out jump in a couple of them and get that five in and and uh, all you have to do is purchase a hundred dollars uh, of tackle through the shop here uh, th um from now until the the championship have that receipt with you when when you win and you win the thousand extra dollars so it's a pretty good deal for everybody now um, if we win are we gonna have to have a receipt <laughs> if, if i mean we, uh, George, if we win <laughs> as of now i'm not even qualified to get to the championship i mean who would have ever thought that i wouldn't have spent that by now i mean i'm just saying i'm i'm being disciplined right now uh, you are brother i mean i'm, I'm on a ban yeah i, I don't think that's going to last real long corbin i, I think yeah you're, uh, yeah super fluke season yeah. <laughs> right <laughs> absolutely edward how you doing uh good to see you buddy carl what's happening uh mark mark i did i did say hi to you yeah uh it's not uh, deep. Uh, yeah, there is a there's a deep pattern there always on the Conowinga pool. Mark is asking if if it's a if it's a deep water fishery. It can be a deep water fishery. You can catch fish up there in real deep water, drop shotting. You could uh, crank deep water and do well with that. There's all, there's some, some uh, brush brush piles. I wouldn't say or more rock piles and ledges you can fish. But there's there you know I didn't me and George didn't fish deeper than three foot of water all day long to catch all of our keepers. So we were super shallow. Uh, I think that pattern will hold up all year long. So uh, anybody can come down and just jump on a bank and fish. Uh, um, and, they're, and, they're everywhere. And they, there's, there's fish everywhere in that pool. So you're at the mercy of the dam. So if the dams run water, the fit, the bite comes on quicker. And uh, we had a, a lot of dead time when they weren't running any water or the wind was holding up the, the current. But, um, you know, we, we, uh, we caught a lot of fish. We probably had 25 fish or so for the day. Yeah. Um, you know, we called many times over, so it was a lot of fun. Um, you can start getting into tournaments, John, if you, I think, have to be 16 years old. 
No. You get in younger than that. Well, I'm not sure. If you're with a parent, I don't know. You have to, I have to find out from Brian. If you were in Fish in My Tournament and you were with your parent, I don't care how old you are. The Conowingo Bass Fishing Series has a Facebook page. Yeah, you can read the, you can read up on that. You can jump over there, mm. and they have the rules posted. And um, yeah, I don't think they're real strict about that. You know, I think they're. I think in in um, because you know the high school kids are doing it now. They have a, a high school series of kids fishing, and and some of those kids are 13, 14 years old. You know, not the high school, but that that that, that they youth, have different age. The brackets. youth they have an age bracket for yeah. younger. So I, I don't I don't think there's a problem there. The Facebook page uh, link is on the comments there, so they should be able to oh. look that up. Yeah, there it is. You guys can jump right on there. There's uh, Caitlin put that up for you, uh, and you can jump on it. Uh, Nick, I didn't introduce you. Nick is in the house. Nick Wink is in the house. Hello. And I'm sorry, Nick. I skipped right over you. You did. You're always out of the, you know, you're always in the shadows. You're, he, Nick's in the shadows. He, he does a great job. Well, let's for face it. it. When you're the producer of the show. Yeah. I mean, basically, you're one step away from having your ankle chained to a desk in a closet somewhere. Yeah, I mean, much. get it done. Yeah, Nick, you know, Nick's running the camera. He has all that producer, stuff going producer on. slash cameraman. Nick. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So Nick, uh, Nick is in the house. So uh, and, and, and when we get to this question and answer session, and if, if you want to ask Nick about some stuff, I mean, he uh, uh, he's here, so he'll answer. We're all going to answer. Um, John, uh, Roland, how you doing, Roland? Mario, what's up, Mario? Uh, Don Roder, hey, how you doing, Don? Saw you today. Don got his uh, NRX Plus today. That was his uh, Father's Day present to himself. Yeah, Father's Day present to himself. I think he got an 802, Corbin. <laughs> hey, at least somebody got one. I yeah. mean, that's sweet, Yeah, dude. that's sweet. And that's... he's going to break it in on the St. Lawrence River. No, I, he's, he's going to go out tomorrow and break. I asked if he, because he's going to St. Lawrence in a few few days, and uh um, he's going to use it up there, but he said he can't wait that long. So he's going to break it in tomorrow at a, at a, a Jersey Lake somewhere. Undisclosed location. Uh, undisclosed location. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. Yeah. Corbin, uh, look like you've been lifting there. Corbin. Uh, oh, just fish. Jason you know. Shea. Just fish, you know? Yeah. Jason Shea says you're looking buff. Tw 12 pound dumbbell curls in 12 <laughs> ounces, whatever, bro. I mean, Shay, it's my birthday weekend, bro. Don't yeah. hustle me. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we got a big show for you. So let's get started here um, with uh, some tournament talk, and we're gonna we're gonna do that right now. Man, oh man, oh man! Have you guys been watching that live feed? I mean, that Bass Pro Tour is flat out sick oh i've been watching it mikey <laughs> i mean this thing is tried and true og flogging i can see you i mean you ain't even believe the stuff i've seen on a mine river oh i like mean to tell you this thing's better than david fritz's lawrence flasher i mean come on come on look at that i use it so much as the, the uh, look, the, the tape's got, coming off, man, Mike. I mean, I, I'm telling you, dude, you got it all you, ripped up and yeah, everything. Come on, take, take a look at that. Oh, I'm, take, take I believe it. I stick my eye on that thing. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, I knew. I see it. I see it. Yeah, well, they well, were flogging on the I main mean, river. I I, uh, I had an opportunity to do some flogging in, in Lake Champlain a couple years ago, and um, and it's, it's, it's fun, but it's no fun. You know, you're all laid out in a deck. You know, you're killing yourself, and... And, um, you know, but when you see a fish, it's pretty cool. I mean, it's, it's, it's something, but man, these fish, these guys are catching. It's oh, it unbelievable. It's off the chart. Unbelievable. So if you want to, if you want to have a good shot at fishing the St. Lawrence river, you better hurry up because the whole world is going to be fishing that place. <laughs> like you would not believe in the next six months, it's going to be out of control. Yeah. Them boys lit it up. They absolutely lit it up. They, they, they broke like every <clears throat> weight record that they had and then i think they invented some new weight records i mean oh, I wheeler who won it uh his first day of his group he set the all-time day record yeah then on the second day of his group he set the all-time two-day record with 222 pounds Good and God. he was practicing and Man, I know we're talking about practice. Of course, he advanced straight to the championship with that that tonnage. Uh, I heard Marty Stone said that they approached six tons of fish caught. Gosh, almighty. Um, 
That's and it was it was primarily they were sight fishing. Yeah. Uh, betting smallmouth. Yep. So they went out and, and practiced, and they they put like five million waypoints on their units for the fish that they had marked. That's a lot of flogging, too, man. Yeah, a I lot. Mean, that is, and that flogging lot. that looks strenuous. Um, it's it's unless it is. I tried unless it. you're Keith Poche. Yeah. <laughs> now Keith Poche invented the periscope flogger, which you know he's like, <laughs> I ain't no dummy. I ain't I ain't gonna be crouched down on the front. I ain't deck bending all day down. Long. I ain't bending I'm down. Gonna make me a tall version. Yeah. I bet you had some mirrors so he didn't even have to tilt his head. It just came up here, mirrors, <laughs> mirrors down. Yeah. <laughs> So that was pretty cool. And, uh, you know, sight fishing, smallies, you know, the drop shot and the Ned rig ruled. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely ruled. Yep. Yep. They fished every kind of Ned bait known to mankind. And some new ones. And some new ones. They drop shotted every kind of drop shot bait that you can think of. Yep. I mean, yep. all the, all the, all the brands that make all the good quality Drop shot worms for small mouth. Z2s you know. were in play. Z2s, drop shot half shells, yep. dream shots. Max uh, sense. All kinds of max scent. Uh, the jackal. Cross tail. Yeah. Cross tail was, was, was uh, represented and so on and on and so on and so on. Yeah. And it was a spinning rod tournament. Now, there were some guys, if you took notice, that were jerk baiting on the flats, especially when the wind was blowing. Mm -hmm. And... Another bait that really shined out was the hair jig. And by hair jig, um, for up north, it would be a marabou jig. Marabou. That was the that was the key because they said that uh marabou had to be a marabou. Yeah, marabou is the is the is the secret, not so much anymore, bait of the North Country. And it is not fished the way we fish right. a jig. It's not bounced on the bottom. Okay. Right. So they take, this is a, uh, a, a VMC uh, Marabou. And if you're familiar with the VMC stuff, it's, you know, perfect quality. 60 degree flat eye hook, you know, VMC, sticky sharp out of the pack. It's like a 2 on there. 2 perfect. But what the trick, the key is, they like the eighth ounce. And the key is they take and put a, on the shank of the hook here, they take and put a chunk of Senko on there. Yeah. Just a little chunk of Senko on there. Because what happens when the marabou wets out, it gets like a little dart. And that thing gives us some body. But more importantly, it gives us some casting weight and some buoyancy. Yeah. Added weight for casting is big. And, and a little <clears> bit <throat> of slower fall. Mm -hmm. And... What they do is with this thing is they cast it out and they reel it back in, kind of like a swim bait. Wow. And those fish, uh, I mean, Justin Lucas put this thing to use, man. Those fish were pouncing on this yeah. thing. So, yeah. you know, the hair jig is uh, obviously going to play on all your smallmouth waters if you have two things that are important shallow and clear mm -hmm. if the fish are shallow and the water's clear yeah when you get that real clear water and those fish yeah, are up like shallow it. and shallow's relative term on the st lawrence river at 10 feet shallow and then you just bomb that sucker out and start reeling it in there was some cool camera footage uh that i saw during the during the live of uh and uh, Andy Montgomery was fishing an area and this, this flat, he was fishing. You can just see these big small mouth, just surfing around out there. And that's the prime situation to throw the hair jig. Um, and they'll oh, yeah. just, they'll just get on that thing. The other thing that played big time up there was the spy bait. Um, you know, obviously the spy bait is, is no longer a, a new secret or a new technique. These are, uh, some of the duo realis offerings right here you got your you got your 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 80 your 80 which is kind of like the the go-to spy bait yeah that's the original yep they make an 80 and they make, they make a g fix 80 yeah g fix a little heavier g fix a little heavier uh model then they have the 90 a little bit longer they made the 90 they call it the bait casting spy bait it's yeah. a little bigger 
And then they have the uh, Alpha 72, which yeah. has that shoddy, taller thick, profile thick, to it. Thick, shoddy profile to it, yep. And we've done a lot of spy baiting. We've done a spy baiting show on, on uh, Tackle Shop Live. We, we do a lot of spy baiting locally. Uh, we throw the spy bait a lot, particularly in the fall. But uh, another spy bait that really plays for us that we, that we really like is the uh, Jackal eye prop which has a little bit of a different fall to it um yeah it's just much slower fall and it's just got a different profile but yeah. but the the deal with the spy bait is uh it's it's a it's a do nothing it doesn't have a lot of wobbler well you you fish it a lot like that hair jig you throw you it do. out and you just reel it back real slow which which you can fish it you know the, the hair jig um and the spy bait you can fish on the same rod you want a little longer rod um a little lighter and a little lighter tip to it and um not you know not only to get that cast with the hair jig but also that when you get a bite on the spy bait because the spy bait's really weird when you're when you're getting loaded up on it's a it's like a loading bite you when you're reeling it you're just reeling it along it's 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 painful to fish if they're not you know if you're if you're trying to figure out where fish are with it it's how about it, Corbin? Yep. Very painful to fish, but the, the bite the bite loads up, you know, like a like kind of like a swim bait. So you want that tip to kind of give for the treble hooks, and um, so that you can use the same rod. And we pref preferably like a little longer rod with a with a with a lighter tip, um, you know, a light medium or a me you know a medium light type of style of rod and um, light line. Well, and a lot of these you're throwing braid with, so you're going to get, you're going to get that super long cast. And, yeah. you know, back when we were talking about, like, hook penetration, you don't need to set the hook real hard to yeah. penetrate with braid. Yeah, they're small hooks. On a light wire hook, so. Mm -hmm. um, thing I noticed about the spy bait, guys, um, in my experience with it, is um, it, it, like, produces the some of the biggest fish in the school. Yeah. Particularly in the fall when you get schools located, schools of smallies that are that are wolf packed up. And you rotate through your schools. I always like to. I always like to come in and fan cast my area with the spy bait a little bit. And for whatever reason, it catches big fish. It catches big fish. Yeah, it's it a, catches big fish. It's a big fish bait. It's a big bait. fish it's, bait. It's just you got to put your time in with it. And once you figure out that they're eating it, then then it's easier to throw. But to you know, until you figure out that how to how they want it and where they want it. Um, it is very painful to fish. Man. Well, the hair jig, the hair <laughs> jig is so specialized up north that, uh, if you look at your rod manufacturers, um, they all offer a hair jig specific rod. You look at, uh, Daiwa, the Seth fighter, Tatula elite, uh, hair jig rod. It's seven, six, basically a medium light. You look yeah. at, uh, Shimano Zodius. Seven six medium light because it's a it's a light bait. Yeah, and the the hot the hot hair jig setup that Corbin alluded to is a braid. To, you know, to a to a fluorocarbon leader and six, and six to eight pound. Yeah, yeah, they'll throw a they'll throw like a ten pound braid or or a fifteen pound braid or even an eight pound braid depending on your personal preferences. You can zing them suckers, man. Some of them guys up there are using like a five pound braid. That yeah. long rod, you know, that long rod. Which I don't that's like thread. Yeah, that long rod really, really yeah. loads out it, there. It, and it send, man. It. and like Mike said, that long rod's useful for a lot of other techniques. I like to fish my spy bait on a spinning rod um, with eight pound fluoro. And yeah, that's and, the and heaviest you kinda, want to throw it with. Just kind of wind it along, you yeah. know. So we wanted to kind of point touch, out touch the on hair that. jig and the and the spy bait because they're kind of fringe baits or they're, they're niche baits or specialty baits yeah. but man did they ever play up there yep. i even i even had a note here on that um yeah so wheeler won it flogging yeah um jeff yeah. sprague he finished flogging. second <laughs> flogging wheeler had 129 pounds on championship uh wednesday jeff sprague had 100 pounds six ounces Skeet Reese finished third with 91 pounds. Uh, Skeet, man. He's been fishing good this year. Yeah, oh, man. You guys, ever, you guys noticed that? He's really been... On both circuits. He's really been fishing well. On both circuits. Yep. He's like 300000 in the bank. Yeah. Uh, and Adrian Avina 
Jersey boy charters. Man, he had a good finish down at the Potomac just recently. Yeah, he's hot. He's Not, on a roll. Yeah, he's on a good roll. He's catching fish like crazy. So. And he's winning. He's winning saltwater tournaments too, offshore tournaments. Yeah, so, so suckers, suckers, man. He's put it. Put him in the water somewhere. He's going to catch him. Oh, he's going to sniff him out. He's going to catch him. Uh, some guys are asking what our topic is for the show tonight, uh, and you can start thinking about them because we're going to start question and answer here real soon. This is uh, where you guys can interact with us. On on the uh, through the Facebook uh, live, um, you can just type in your question, whatever. It doesn't have to be uh, fishing. It can be uh, whatever. You can ask whatever questions. It doesn't electronics, matter. Electronics, you know, electronics. You can boats set you know, up anything that you can possibly think of. Um, you know uh, about us. Uh, you know what we do, how we do things. You can ask about you know things that you're wondering about. So start thinking about some of that stuff because um, we're going to get started with question and answer here in just a few minutes um, once we finish up here with the tournament talk. Uh, um, so uh, that's the topic tonight. It's our question and answer topic um, for guys that are wondering what is going on tonight with our show. Yeah, that's well, it's, you know, it's so it's, we like to do this a couple times. Yeah, there. Kevin just checked in. Kevin Marble just uh, uh, Ma Mabel. 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 Sorry, Kevin. Yeah, Ke uh, Kevin just checked in. Um, what's up to you, buddy? Um, uh, Richie Hall, how are you doing, Richie? Uh, Barry, how are you doing? Paul, what's up? What's up there, buddy? Jeff Riddle. So, yeah, we have um, um, we, we that, that was a that was just a great tournament to watch. It was know, for uh, I know a lot of guys have been watching because we've been getting a lot of a lot of guys coming in saying, man, what's this thousand island thing all about? So. I recommend that you uh, rush up there quickly. Change your holiday weekend plans <laughs> rush, and rush uh, up there. <laughs> leave as soon as Tackle Shop Live is over and drive up to the yeah. St. Lawrence River. You can fish anywhere from the the mouth of the river at Cape Vincent all the ways up to Messina and catch some fish. Yeah. It's on. Yeah, it's on. And you'll probably see some people up there this weekend. Yeah, is, my, is what yeah. I'm thinking. <laughs> so we got guys checking in from Facebook. We also have guys checking in from our um, YouTube page. So Joseph, how are you doing? Thanks for stopping. There was a couple other guys from YouTube stopping in here and checking us out. Uh, speaking of that, uh, Corbin and George and Nick, um, we uh, you know all of our shows we put on our podcast um, site, and uh, for you guys who. Uh, maybe can't catch the whole show or you want you want to re-listen to it and you just can't sit on your computer and watch you can download it from any of the uh the popular uh podcast stations spotify um itunes itunes wait uh, apple iHeart. we're on itunes oh yeah yeah baby <laughs> Yes. So all you know, yes. not not all of our episodes, but a lot of our episodes are on there. I think there's 17 or 18 of them on there now. Maybe maybe 20. I don't know. Um, you can go on there and you can you can listen to them while you're driving. Would listen to them when you're heading to a tournament or you're going on a long trip. You can pop it in and listen to it. But um, you know, shout. Uh, you know, I got a couple shout outs. Some people that listen to our show. Yeah, yeah. let's do some shout outs. And not watch our show, but they you know participate yeah. live. They. They listen to our show. So a couple shout outs to um, Independence Canada or I'm sorry, Independence, Kansas as oh, our as our number one listening city. Outstanding. Awesome. Yeah. Number one listening si uh, city is Independence, Kansas. So independent, independent, Kansas. Thank you so much for listening. And, and independent independence. That's what I said. You said independent. Hey, it's independence, independence. day this week. Independence. Practice. Independence. 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 Whatever. My gay. close. I get close with a lot of stuff. You guys, you guys knew that. Uh, also, shout out to uh, some international listeners. We got a lot of listeners in Canada. A a because they're huge smallmouth junkies. Yeah, and they know we're huge smallmouth junkies. So well, don't don't uh, don't sleep on the largemouth bite up north. No, I know that, but you know they be flipping and they be frogging. They do, they do, they do all that. Hey. All, also, we have a, a number a number of of listeners from France. That's Who'd pretty have thunk cool. it. Yeah, yeah. And we have uh, a real nice uh, following from the UK, Germany, Japan, Ireland, and Australia. So Down we're, under, we're all Perfect. over. Yeah. 
So uh, other notable cities that are right there with uh, Independence. Yeah. Did I say it right? You did. Yep. All right. Very well. Is Columbus, Ohio, Indianapolis, Indiana. Yeah. Chesapeake, Virginia is big. Yeah. Toronto, Canada. Philly, of course. <laughs> uh, Westlake, Stevens, Washington. So, um, and then here's a, here's one uh, from England is the uh, Black Heath and uh, Townbridge, Townbridge, Tr 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 Trowbridge, Trowbridge. That's what it was. Trowbridge. Trowbridge. Black Heath. Is that like a pub? England. Is that a pub? Yeah. So pretty neat stuff. I mean, well, pull up a thank, pint thank, there, boys, and listen to our show. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you guys for listening. And like I said, it's something you guys that are, uh, you know, can only watch part of the show because I know we get long winded. Um, you can stop in and uh, download it onto your favorite device and listen to it on, you know, while listen you're to it while you're driving up to the Thousand Islands this weekend. Yeah, you absolutely. can bang out a few. You can bang out a few episodes. Um, get there quick. Okay, so any questions here? Uh, you guys can drop them on here. We're ready to get started with question and answer. I just saw a good question on here. Um, if you could only have one on your boat. Would you do a uh, trolling motor with spot lock or would you do uh, a shallow water ankle anchors such as power poles or talons if you can only do one? Hmm. And to me, that's a no-brainer. Well, you know, it's pretty much a no-brainer for me too. But see, I have, to, I have to know more information because if you're a shallow water guy, power poles. Power poles all yeah. day long. If you like to fish shallow... Power yeah. poles, because you know you're probably flipping, getting up on the on the wood and the and the grass, and when you spot lock on that kind of stuff, and the wind's blowing and the current's blowing, your trolling motor's spinning around on you, and you're blowing current all over your targets. Then I prefer the power pole. But if you're an all around guy who's probably splitting between deep and shallow, I would go with a spot lock. Uh, myself. Yeah. Myself, because. You know, at some point down the road, you save your shekels up. You're going to be able to add the other one. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm. Uh, it would. It would be. I, I do fish shallow a lot, but um, spot lock for me in the way I fish and where I fish. If I could only pick one, I would take that one over top of anything. I'd take power poles. Really? I swear to God. Yeah, uh -huh. and, and and here's why. Because if you're not fishing like. 40, 50 foot of water, or, or which a lot of places you don't do that, you can use an anchor. And I mean, look at John Cox, just, just saying, catches a lot of fish shallow with a Fortrex. Brian Thrift runs a Fortrex a lot. You know, I mean, there's a lot of guys out there that I, I, have, have, have won a lot of money on a Fortrex. I, under, I do even understand though, that. Even though the Alltrex is still out there. So, I understand I mean, that, but they're fishing a lot of lakes, bro. I, and again, that's not, and, and you know, the, and you especially should know that, yeah. you know, in, in, in the situations that we get into all the time, that, that spot lock. Yeah. But it's like, if you can only pick one, if you can pick one. Yeah. I'm going four tracks because interesting dur durability. Interesting. So you would go, you would go, you would go with four tracks and power poles. Okay. So you're going to pick power poles. Yep. Power poles. George's power pick, poles. Power poles and I'm spot lock. So if I can only have one. Yeah. You know. And and guys, think about this too. It's, it's this sounds really stupid, but you go fishing by yourself. How awesome is it to have power poles just to use at the ramp? I mean, it's pretty convenient from time to time. Docking, all, all these little things, man. Like yeah. Yeah. I I don't know. Well, that's a good that's, one. That's, that's good question. That's, very good question. Uh, uh very good question. And I and I don't know if we answered it for you, but hopefully we hopefully we did. Um we had another question here about there's a fellow struggling with uh, weedless uh, or are weedless tube heads with uh, losing and missing some fish. Um, he feels like the wire is not allowing the, 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 the fish to close its mouth on the bait. <clears throat> um, so, I mean, I know what you're saying. I don't think that's the problem. The problem may be that there's a couple things you can do. You can take and I think I have one right over here. George. Yep. I had one rigged up. I just had it in my hand. Oh, there it is, right here. Yeah, so, you know, one of the things is that the wires, 
they're pretty consistent, but there is some, you know, inconsistencies because it's a person putting a wire in a mold. So when they load the mold up, they may get the wire where it's supposed to be most of the time, but every now and then they'll get one that's either short or a little long. And when they're, when they're long, they kind of get back in the hook a little bit and they, they kind of arch up a little more. So, and when they're short, they get in, they, they're, they're in front of the barb and you got to kind of watch out too, because it can slip behind the barb and then lock in behind the barb. So what, what we do is after we rig them up, we take the wire and we kind of smash it down a little bit and just, just back and forth. Yeah. Just kind of back and forth a little bit, just to weaken it. Just, and all you're doing is just taking a little bit of the spring off of it. You don't want to take too much off because the reason we're using this is because we're allowed to, we can pre present this bait better than a guy with an open hook in, in some situations, you know, like the high water situations, the grass beds, the, the, uh, you know, the, 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 the brush, the timber, the weeds, you can fish a tube, th you know, through that stuff much, much better. And you're not retying all the time. So you want to just, just kind of bend it down, pull it back a few times, and then just make sure it's hooked in there underneath your, um, underneath your point, but not too far, not right behind the barb. Because if it gets behind, right behind the barb, I can pull this up and lock it in there. I'll stretch it out, lock it in there. Then you have to pop it out of the barb and, sometimes it'll stick in there so make sure you you can take the wire you can bend it a little bit just to make sure that it goes right where you want it to go and that's right in front of that barb i've got the good angle on it i've got a good angle on that and it's just ready to come right off of there just with the lightest little tension it'll just pop out of the way and you'll get the hook set i would say that there's certain days where i miss more fish than other days but it's very very little i get a really good hookup ratio with it and and i had a guy in today asking me about it and he he was kind of concerned also and i said well listen if you're fishing and you're making you know that's all about how many casts you make in a day and that that takes your percentage rate way up so if you're casting in where the fish are and you have an open hook and you're breaking off and you're you're retying and you're breaking off and retiring that's taking up a lot of time especially if you're corbin who uh you know, he'll, he'll, he'll break off three, four, five of them at a crack and he'll have to sit down for 25 minutes. Oh, I'll answer this question and retie them up. <laughs> um, you know, so, um, it, it allows you to fish longer, get more bites than any, you know, than, 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 than you would if you didn't have it. And if at the end of the day, if you miss one or two fish or three fish cause of it, the wire, well, you, 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 you caught more fish anyway, so you're up ahead of the game anyway, but I just don't see it to be a problem. Just, just take that. Especially if you, uh, especially if you weaken that wire, what, what happened over the course of the years of, of having this tube in our lineup was, you know, back in the early days, obviously we experimented yeah, and we found out that if we go one tiny little bit lighter on the wire, the, the wire manufacturer did did some samples for us with a lighter wire. Yeah, it it, it didn't work. It didn't work. And if we it was went ineffective, if we went one size up, it you it was too stiff. Yeah, and then you then you did lose a lot of fish because so you weren't you take, getting penetration. If you take this wire and like pre weaken it a little bit, um, and then take time to make sure you hook sharp, you're going to be in business. And and when you're fishing rock and current, um, or just a lot of rock. It's really good. It's not bad in wood either. I mean, I fish it in wood too, but it's really good. Yeah, we use now. You got to understand too about this because I'm, uh, you know, Mark or Matt's uh, uh, is saying uh, um, about the hook. We use a, a, a fine wire hook, and it's not an expensive hook, so it's not a it's a, not a super strong hook like a Gamagatsu. However, I use this, and, and he even said he caught a, a five pounder on it and didn't have a problem with it. Um, if you do get hung up, it does bend out a little bit and you can get it back pretty easily and it's made to be sharpened. So when you get them first thing out of the, out of the pack, you got to sharpen it. And, and it's, it's very, very important. You got to make sure that you sharpen your hook. That could be another one of your problems with losing the fish is that you're not making sure that your hooks are sharp. Um, if we made these in Gamagatsu, they wouldn't be affordable. Right. And nobody would want to buy them. It would be way too expensive. So we make them with a Mustad uh, um, 
a wire hook, which is strong, and we caught five pounders on it. We've caught some big yeah. fish and never had problems with it. And yeah, you have to bend it back with a pair of pliers, but you must sharpen it. Always, always, you must just dress just it up. Check it, and yep. and then you can go on our YouTube page. I think we have a video on our YouTube page. Sharpening. We do have a video on the sharpening and the tube setup. Yeah, so you can see how we rig it, what we do to rig it, and you can see how we sharpen them. It's very easy; only takes a second. And that'll probably help you with losing fish because if you have a doll hook, I don't care what product you use, you're going to lose fish because of the, you're getting zero penetration. Corbin, yeah. what sh what do you have? And I know it's going to be totally off the what rocker. Oh, I can't wait! I've been, <laughs> I mean, I've been like licking my chops for this question. It's June. If yeah, it's on the Susquehanna River. There's not a lot of current right now. Yeah, there is a massive crayfish molt. Half the time you're getting a reaction bite. And this is like the 90, 10% rule where like 90% of your bites come on the first 10% of your cast. I'm throwing an open hook. I mean, if, if I'm throwing a weedless hook right now, it's because I'm thinking I'm fishing nasty stuff. We don't have high water. We don't have a lot of current. Yeah. If I'm going to fish it in grass, I'm going to Texas rig it. And if I'm going to throw the weedless hook, you better have it on a medium heavy rod because this time of year, a lot of times when that tube hits the water, that's when you get those bites. And for me, this is exactly why I use the open hook right now. Yeah. That is, that is why I use it right now. Because and that's, and, and you and, don't have a lot of current and that's you're fishing. You can pick, you know, you can pick off your ledges yeah. and yeah, you're going to lose some tubes, but you're, you're going to lose some tubes either way. So, I mean, make sure you're using a medium heavy rod. Yeah. If you're, you know, make sure you're using fluorocarbon line if you're using that or, or, you know, a braid to fluorocarbon leader. And, uh, I mean, dude, set the freaking steel. I mean, yeah. drop the hammer on them. Well, that's just it too. You know, uh, this is the time of year where you can use more open hooks. So you don't have a problem with it, but, um, for most of us, you know, with the touch on the bottom, and if you don't have that real good feel touch on the bottom, um, and you, uh, uh, allow your line to get a little bit more uh, bend in it, then you're going to have a little bit of problem with snagging up and this, the, the, the wire will help you with that. But, um, you know, so the time of the year you can, you can mess around with open hook and, and weed guard hook, but I'm telling you the weed guard thing is probably for you to sort of weaken yeah. the wire a little bit and then sharpen those hooks. That'll, that'll absolutely do it. What else we got? Thank you. Have you seen anything pop up here? I've seen, I've seen a couple things. I, there was one uh, question about, chatterbait fishing and that's kind of a long answer barry so i'm going to recommend that you uh go back to our youtube channel and watch our chatterbait show we we did we broke them down man we did trailers because the key to the chatterbait is the trailer be it a boot foot a fish or a crawl style so it's a lot of information i'm going to recommend because it's a long topic i'm going to recommend you go and watch that Chatterbait shell. This freaking dive bomber. What is that? That's a brave fly right there. He comes around again. I'm going to tune him up a little bit. <laughs> yep. Here's a here's an interesting question, Corbin. You, you you may have a little 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 help on this. What is and this is from Emmanuel. I can pop this up on the on the screen here. Um, his question is what is what is your go to pressured bait for reservoirs like like what Lake Marburg or other lakes? Um, what you know? What kind of advice and recommendation do you have for a lake that's clear, clear water, and high pressured? So I do one of two things. Um, I either go big and go out deep, like a big worm or a big jig or something like that, or I go heavy and I go dirt shallow. Um, you know, it really depends on if there is grass or if there's not grass. If the water's crystal clear, if it's not, I mean any lake nowadays has just a ton of pressure and uh it, it really doesn't matter where it's at because fishing is popular so you know if you see everybody offshore then chances are yes there's fish offshore but don't be afraid to go shallow and and, and flip some trees and you know go in the shade and all that kind of stuff this time of year but if i had to pick one bait um i'd say i'd probably pick a jig and the reason why i'd pick a jig is because i can take that same jig and i can go very shallow with it and i can also take that same jig go out deep and and drag it around yeah and I, and interesting I'd, and i'd go with a pretty pretty big size trailer um you know something like a, a full-size rage crawl full-size rage bug uh something where you can really you know drag that around because half the time you your bites this time of year come on that initial drop anyways so well i'll tell you you know we talked about it tonight and i would say that you might want to give this a you might want to get this a try now over top of that grass, that little deeper edge grass, throw that out there, let it sink, reel it back real slow. 
Um, we talked about it here. You could put that little piece of Senko on there. This may be something that might really work because we we just realized, we just found out from this weekend fishing that it really works well in clear, um, pressured water. But the water's got to be clear. And shallow. And shallow. So you can fish this over top of the grass, and that might work really well for you. So for me, I think if I was going up there, I, it would be hard for me to – get away from you know a shaky head you know uh i've done well on a shaky head up there uh you know a, a four inch or a five inch um green pumpkin green pumpkin watermelon clear water uh because it does have a grass aspect i think the shaky head is something you're going to get bit on you're going to get some bites whether they're going to be the right bites i don't know but guess what i'm just out having fun to get my line stretched i'm going to throw a shaky head around up there you, and what do you have for pressured water Clear pressure water. Yeah, well, I mean, if it's if it's a tough bite, it's a tough bite. If it's a tough bite, and I'm on a I'm on a lake that's clear, and there's a lot of fishing pressure, like it's a Sunday. Yeah, uh, I mean, I'm following people around. Mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously, after a while, you're going to be fishing where everybody fish because there's a lot of people out, and it, and, and it's a nice day, you know. And mm -hmm. there's and, and let's just say it's just a really tough bite. I'm going to fish a drop shot. Yeah. As much as it pains me to yeah. do so, it's in that, and it's a proven. That's yeah. a pro, that's a proven I'm gonna, technique. I'm gonna I'm gonna take a four a, inch uh, finesse worm. My confidence, my confidence worm there is either a zoom finesse worm or a strike king uh, fat baby finesse. I'm going to uh, Texas rig it, you know, on a on a straight shank worm hook on my drop shot, and I'm gonna pitch it around. Boat docks, yeah. shallow trees, and grass. And my whole goal is going to be to get some bites. And then once I start catching some fish uh, and I start getting a little momentum going, then I might spin off into another direction. But, you know, you got to catch five before you can call. So that's that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. And, you know, that was a great question. And Corbin, you know, so uh, uh, for Marburg, you know, for instance, Corbin does well over there. He's he's won he's won he's caught a lot of fish over there and, and won some tournaments over there. So, you know, I'd be leaning over that way if you want to catch biggins because that's what uh, Corbin does well over there. But I know that the shaky head over there works really well too from from the rest of my customers. Next question up is from Doug Miller, and his question is swim jig versus a swim bait on the bay, and uh, when do you throw it? When do you throw one over the other? That's a good question. Yeah, well, I'm assuming that he's fishing grass. Yep, I um, guess. You know, on the I'm, bay. I'm, just, assume, I'm assuming. When would you throw either one? Assuming he's fishing grass, you know. So I mean, that that's. I mean, if you have to pick between one, or or is that the question, or or the when, swim jig? Right here it is. The swim jig versus the swim bait on the bay. When do you throw one versus the other? Oh, okay. Uh, Pay attention, George. Yeah. Pay attention. I, I you're, you're wandering off there, buddy. I don't know if I have a good answer for that one. I I, I do. I mean, <laughs> I know I know what I what I do is, is I, I, wait for this. I I experiment with both. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, I don't I don't like look at the conditions and stuff. I don't I don't think I have enough of a background to 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 you know to pull out of the catalog vault. Hey, man, this is a swim jig day or this is a swim bait day. Um, so I, I fish them both. Um, well, yeah, yeah and just see I, where I'm getting bit. I think you, I think you would, you would probably try both of them. But, uh, for me, when the grass is at its lower point and it's not so thick and, uh, and, or the fish are transitioning in the fall when the grass is dying, I like the swim bait. You can get it through the, you yep. can get it through the grass. You can get it through the edge of the grass. You can fish the, the, away from the dying grass or you can fish over top of that nice little emergent grass better i think with a with a swim bait i think i think the fish like it better the bait fish that are around that time of year the 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 um the swim bait works to me is the better presentation in the spring and the fall whereas the swim jig when the grass is a little thicker the eel grass comes up and you're pulling through that and you're popping it out the other side, you're getting that, you're, you're working it a little bit tighter to the cover and in the cover. I think the swim jig's more versatile. I think, 
I think, uh, you know, you might have to change colors a lot. You may have to go from white to green pumpkin to black and blue, depending on the water, water situation, uh, clarity and, uh, what, you know, whether they're eating white perch or their yellow perch or their bluegills or whatever's going on. But, you know, um, I just like it. I like, there's a lot of different choices for what they eat down there. Yeah. I just, I, you know, I like the swim jig for, you know, like say, uh, June ish. Uh, until it gets real super thick and and you can't really fish it that well but um like that uh, may halfway through may and june i really like that swim jig but in the spring i agree with that early spring i love i love that that swim bait that five inch swim bait down there is deadly and i love it in the fall when everything's dying off and they're going to hard cover or they're moving out to the, the outside edges or you may have a patch of of uh deeper grass that hasn't died off yet you know yep. i just like that swim bait for that how you're rigging it so for me i'm actually i'm gonna fish a swim bait when i can throw a chatter bait yeah i'm gonna mix it in there so um you know a lot of guys you know they, they struggle okay well when do i throw a chatter bait when do i throw a swim jig you know kind of this conversation if the grass is too thick that you can't get a chatter bait through that's a time to go to a swim jig um unless you're gonna throw it weightless and, and reel it across the top like a frog but, but that's a whole other different know kind of topic with that swim bait um with the swim bait i'm, I'm gonna slowly reel it in that deeper grass on the edges of it but if possible you know before the grass gets too high i'm gonna throw an open hook like a jaywell head or a strike king squadron head if i can get through it if not i'm gonna use like one of the the corkscrew texas rig heads um eat a, whatever it is with like the, the belly the weight beast, on the belly with, weight yeah with the belly weight on with, it. with the lightest weight possible so that i can reel it as slow as possible guys have been rigging it like that lately with the blade on it yeah. and 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 That's that good. that with the blade on man has been really kicking butt this year i don't know if it's just this year we've we've had mixed results with the other years but this year man everybody wants a blade on their belly weighted hooks but me and george we fish them differently we fish uh we fish a screw lock uh bullet weight head um uh, made by bullet weights has a little screw lock on it and we uh, use a 40 extra wide gap on a five inch bait super line super line uh hook with braid and then that pegs that bullet weight you can slide down and corkscrew it into the plastic and it pegs it all at once so you don't have an extra peg to catch grass or whatever you got that nice clean taper well and that weight needs to be connected to that bait yeah and as then soon now as, you, as soon as you connect the weight to the bait yeah is when you start getting the big belly roll you, you get that nice nice uh uh, role. role which is very important now the other thing about that too george is you can add blades to um your uh swim bait very easy with that rig you know now they have the corkscrew will will leafs that you can corkscrew into your into your, yeah. into your plastic um, you know what else you can do mike you, you can take the, the little neoprene stops we talked about last week the little gamagatsu neoprene stops yeah put a neoprene stop on your hook slide it down yeah um get a swivel um that you know has a ring just a little bit bigger than your barb slide it on and then put another neoprene stop on top of that now your swivel can't go forward or backward and your blades hanging right out the back you know so sort of right under that swim bait um so you can modify the ones you have. There's also some nice ones that are pre-made uh, by just about every hook manufacturer out there. They have with the blade attached. A lot of them are coming off of a wire. So that's a that's an option. You can modify what you have also, which is something I do a lot. Um, takes about a minute, two minutes, and you're hooked up. Um, you can also, you know, like I yeah. said, you can buy the yeah. belly weighted ones. Yeah, that's ones. that, and that's excellent. So there, there you go, Doug. I hope that helps you out. Um, so what we do, uh, we have some success with it. You know, it's funny because it's like George said initially. Um, I think you you'll see us like when in the spring when I say you know we're throwing a swim bait a lot, but we're you know the other rod has a chatter bait on it. You know, so that's kind of like a swim jig, but you know that that's the other rod. And then in the fall. The swim bait, uh, we're throwing that, but the other rod has a swim jig on it. You know, the, so we, we, you almost like test the waters because I hate to miss that bite because when that swim jig bite comes on, ladies and gentlemen, it is incredible. It's absolutely incredible. You absolutely flog them. And, um, flog. And that's, yeah, flog. yeah, that's the word <laughs> of choice tonight, right? <laughs> so, uh, but, um, 
you know, Corbin, Corbin says it right. I mean, when he fishes swim jig and I, I fish with Corbin a lot. So I know, uh, the jig head is awesome. If you can get away with it, it has a great body roll. And, and anytime you're fishing a swim bait, you want to get as much body roll as possible, uh, to get that flash of the bait. Um, that's why there's so many swim baits out there. Some of them are good and some of them are bad. So you got to try them all out. We like the reaction innovation uh, skinny dipper. Uh, we feel like it has some of the best roll out there, but there's there's a bunch of other ones that that'll do the job for you. Um, if Ky you, if, Ky if no slouch either. Yeah, but yeah. you got to rig it right. You do. If you don't rig it right. I drag them a lot too. Yeah. I'll, I'll I'll when the bite gets tough and I'm and I'm catching them on a swim bait and it's a tough bite, I'll slow that thing right down and 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 drag it. So I uh, hope that answered so, your question. So I got I got a question for you, Mike and George. Uh, on as far as this conversation goes before we move to the next one. What about on rock? Do you ever throw a swim jig on rock or would you just go with a straight swim bait? Because for me, I'm going to go a straight swim bait open hook. Um, hmm. Yeah, I probably uh, would. Yeah, I probably would do straight swim sw swim bait. Uh, the swim jig thing to me, I'm other than grass, I'm new at. And, I, and the guys fish them, you know, they fish them in all different situations, but most of these guys are fishing them in grass. I like them on grass, but I also fish them a lot in lay down wood. Yeah. I, I, I guess I, I lay, would lay down, lay down wood. Um, yeah. You know, that was something we were doing the other week when we were pre fishing for this tournament. Yeah. Running that swim jig down those trees. Yeah. I just, that's a great, I, that's a great location. I just don't have down. a lot of, a lot of, you know, lot, lot to say about that because I just don't do a lot of that. I have other things that I like to throw, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it, it makes sense anywhere, you know, kind of like a spinnerbait fishing, you know, exactly. It's a lot like spinnerbait exactly. fishing. So, uh, next question here, not that one is, man, where did I go with that right here? Uh, Dylan has a question. What's y'all's go to lure? For finding fish on a new body of water. That's a fantastic question. That is a question. fantastic question. That is a great question. Corbin, go ahead, brother. When you just jump on a brand new piece of water and you don't know what's going on, what do you do? Well, I don't have just one because, I I mean, you have to do a little bit of research. No, I know, but. I mean, because if you pull up to the, the lake, like if somebody put me, they picked me up and just transplanted me in the middle of somewhere, okay? I mean, I'm either going to see rock, I'm going to see wood, I'm going to see clean water, dirty water, or I'm going to see grass. And every single one of those situations is going to determine what I'm going to pick up. Yeah. Um, and also, I mean, you're talking time of year. You know, your, your go-to bait in the spring is going to be different than your go-to bait in the fall and the summer. So for me, I guess if I had to pick one, because of the versatility, it'd be a jerk bait. Yeah, I, I mean, I mm. Because if you only not have, what I expected, if you only have one bait, dude, you need something you can cover water fast. You know, it's not going to be a top water because if it's in the springtime or the fall, I mean, depending on the water temp or the winter, you're not you're not going to get bit doing it. Mm -hmm. You can't cover enough water with a Ned rig or something slow. So, I mean, for me, I'm going to go with a jerk bait because I can fish it year round and dirty water, yeah. clean water. Anywhere. Yeah, good, good, good one, George. Yeah, I mean, I look at um, a. a uh, you have to you have to look at it a little bit deeper than just that question. Yep, I mean you're going to take into consideration your conditions, right? You know you're going to take into consideration it's spring, it's warming, it's cooling. You're going to take into consideration it's it's spawn season, what have you. But one bait that I think covers spring through fall excellent choice for all forms of cover for for powering around and learning a body of water and fi finding some f active fish is a uh, chatterbait uh that, that was the other one i was so yeah. you know i'm gonna i'm gonna be great i'm gonna be chatterbaiting because a i can skip a chatterbait extremely well up underneath boat docks overhangs cut skips banks. like a nice flat rock yep. yeah it skips great i can swim it around Lay down trees. I hate. I hate it for wood. Well, you you want to you want to make sure when you're fishing an open hook. I, honest to God, I hate it. When you're fishing an open hook chatterbait on wood, you want to make sure your casting angles are parallel to yeah. the wood. Do not come across a piece of wood with that thing. It will grab but it, and hang up every single time. You do have at your at your disposal. Uh, Z Man makes in the David Walker series. They make a wonderful weedless chatterbait. 
Bingo. Yes. Ding, 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 ding. So we got a winner. You want to yep. have one or yep. two of those in your in your box. Yep. It's an outstanding bait, but it has a nice wide weed guard on it that you can crawl through the wood. The other nice thing about a chatterbait, obviously, if you're on a lake that has grass, perfect. But here's the thing that you might overlook with the chatterbait is the ability to yo-yo it. So yeah. I can upsize to a half or a three-quarter, and I can fish – uh, a little deeper rock piles. I can, I can, ledges. I can yo-yo it down a drop. Yep. I can yo-yo it on an offshore piece of structure, yep. uh, like a point or a hump. So that's going to be my pick. Um, Dylan, I, sure. Dylan, I got you. I got you on this spinner bait, a green pumpkin Sanko, bro. No matter where you go, oh. ever anywhere in the world, oh. anywhere in the world, you will catch fish. On a green pumpkin Sanko, whether you wacky rig it or Texas rig it, I don't care. You will catch fish on that. And it is a slower presentation, and you have to use your boat to get around to try different structures. But if they're there, they will eat that sucker. You know, guaranteed. I don't care. I, I would, I mean, that Sanko man is just a, a lifesaver. Nicholas Wink. Now, you were just, I think you just went up to uh, a body of water that you don't really fish that much. I think you went to Raystown Lake that you don't really fish. So right. when you got up there the first time, what was it? What was the bait? Right away, I mean, this time of year, I'm throwing top water. Yeah. I'm, I'm going I'm to hit points. I'm going to go where the bait fish are, you know, until that doesn't work. And then I had to pick another bait. It'd be a jig. Yeah. You, know, you can do anything with a jig. Yeah. You know, you can swim it. You can... Hop it across the bottom, keep it on top, whatever you want to do. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, I mean, you know, that that's that's the I think George alluded to it the time of the year and everything. Okay. But one bait, man, you can have it, you must have in your box. I agree with everything that was said here today. Yeah, for sure. I agree with all that and above, but I would still go with the Sanko, brother, because it catches fish. Great question. Uh here's a cool question right here. And I got a really cool answer for you, Gary Kalick. Go into Peckway uh, Saturday. What should I expect? I'll tell you what you should expect. <laughs> 10,000 freaking boats with skiers <laughs> on the back, running up and down, waking you all day long. <laughs> Stay the hell home if you're going to go there. <laughs> yeah. And I think you guys are fishing a tournament there this weekend, and I pity you. Um, <laughs> but uh, but on a, on a truthful note, I would go up into the rocks as deep as possible to get away from the boat traffic. And get on those uh, those rockfish up there, and I think you guys will, you know, stay over towards the current side, or get around some current because you're going to need it. Uh, they're catching biggins right up at the dam. Um, I, I had some of the the um, uh, boil pumpers in today or the, the other day, and they were whacking big smallies um, fishing um, for catfish. So they were they were using uh, some minnows and stuff, and they were whacking big smallies right up there in that fast water. So. Go up in that fast water, chuck some spinner baits around and some jerk baits and some rattle traps, and you should do really well. But stay off of the main pool because they will kill you out there. Trust me. All right. What else we got here, George? You've been looking? Yeah, I haven't been seeing a whole lot. We're not really getting a lot of love on the question and answer game. Well, I mean, you know, these guys are maybe may a little, they may be a little, uh, a little, uh, Here's one for you guys. That's a shy. What do you got? Uh, Jeff Riddle wants to know why is he catching smaller fish and not the big, big ones? Ah, that's a great question. That is a great question. Well, uh, you know, right now, right now, you're catching small fish is because that's the reason why is there's a lot more of those aggressive fish out there right now, and they're all that 10, 12 inches. There's a ton of them out there, so they're a lot more aggressive, and you're fishing in those areas where there is a lot of those fish. So they always say that the fish kind of hang out in packs, and, and I don't believe that all the time. I think you can catch both sizes in them. So you either got to change your presentation and go a little bigger or go a little deeper or go a little shallower. But Well, we need the, to know a little the, more. I yeah, mean, but where is he fishing? What? Small mouth, large mouth, to me, rivers, yeah. lakes. But to me, but to me, if, north, you're, south, if you're catching east, small west, fish, tide. if you're catching small fish, you need to ch change up and move. That's the that's period, and it's hard to do, especially if you're catching, you know, twelve, thirteen inches, and you're looking for, you know, you need kickers. 
you got to stop what you're doing. You got to put everything away. You got to go somewhere else. You got to try something different because it's just, that's what you're going to catch. If you're in that pattern, that's a pattern for small fish. You need to change your pattern up. You need to go try something different. Um, well, here's the deal, Mike. If yeah. you're fishing, um, in other words, let's look at it from this perspective. So most of the country right now is, you know, post spawn. Yeah. Okay. Some of the some of the fish are fully transitioned and into a summer mode. Some some fish in a lot of places are post spawn. So A, you have to start appealing to those fish that are wanting to feed up. So I'm gonna be throwing uh walking topwater bait. I'm gonna be throwing uh, if I'm fishing a grass body of water, I'm going to be throwing buzz bait, frog, you know, chatter bait, all active. In other words, if you notice everything I'm mentioning here, it's all active moving baits targeting the more aggressive big fish that are kind of by themselves. They're not really schooled up. That's why, you know, I never cast to the same spot twice. And you know, if I'm in clear clear water and it's a flat type situation, I can I can bomb that walk bait out there. I can call those fish up to me, which is going to be your bigger fish in 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 most circumstances. Uh, twitching a fluke style bait, a super fluke, a caffeine shad. Um, if you're fishing a little bit of deeper water, put a barrel swivel up your line about 12, 18 inches. You know, cast it out, let it sink a couple feet, and then pop pop pause pop pop pause again you're pulling the fish to the bait and the fish that's coming is the bigger aggressive eater the big boy so top water walking bait uh fluke style bait if you're fishing grass buzz bait you're not going to get a ton of bites but you're going to catch a bigger grade of fish um and a chatter bait mm -hmm. and don't cast to the same place twice yeah. keep Burn the motors down. Burn and, the trolling motor batteries. And if you're fishing a lake and you're largemouth fishing, upsize your bait. Go to a 10-inch worm. Don't be afraid to play with your weight. That's um, a great you know, comment. That that 10 inch worm catches big fish. Uh if you're throwing like a brush haul, go to a full size. Um, the 10 inch if, worm thing is genius. If if you're flipping, go to something heavier. I mean, bigger jig, heavier weight, something to try to get a reaction, but faster fall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So there's a lot, a lot of stuff you can do. And one of them is just get what you got to change up what you're doing. Cause that's yeah. all you're going to catch. If yeah. you keep, keep doing what you're doing. Yep. Uh, here's a great question. Um, this is, this is one for, uh, I think the whole rack of us here, original chatterbait or jackhammer and why. Mm. 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 Back when the chatterbait first came out and we, and we didn't have selection, it caught the hell out of fish. It absolutely annihilated fish everywhere. It was unbelievable. And then they came out with, uh, you know, some cool colors on some other heads and maybe some better hooks. Better uh, mousetrap. Yeah, it was a better mousetrap. And then along came the hammerjack. The hammerjack. Now. I don't I have a hard time not throwing that. I, Joe, I, I honestly don't know, Joe. I, I, I'll tell you this. There's a great video on Z-Man's website that shows every bait and in the water, and it has a, uh, a, a microphone in the water, and it shows you the action of the bait it sh and, it, and the sound. So um, – I, I believe that the original chatterbait is still a very vile, you know, a, a vile, option, viable, viable option. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it's a, it's a good option. And it is, it, it catches fish, but the chatter, the jackhammer chatterbait, because of the sound that it creates. Now, what, what, what I mean by that is the blade's a little thicker. It hits the head and, um, makes a different ring when, the when the chatter is going through the water. I believe that that is a better sound for catching fish. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot. There's a lot that goes into making the jackhammer what it is. There is. Um, you know, one of the things that I that I like about it is the hook. Um, I feel as though the original chatterbait has too big of a hook in it. Right. 
and and for for all around use. Um, that's one of my pet peeves on that bait. Um, it, it, can it be proven that that the jackhammer catches more fish? I, I I'm pretty sure it can be if you just look at tournament results. I mean, just the last couple shows we had. I mean, well, plus, every tournament breakdown we did was jackhammer, yeah. jackhammer, jackhammer. And I think jackhammer. a lot of it had to do with the colors too, like, like the blade color. Blade color is key. I think. I I mean, I I painted blades are so important, and you don't get a lot of that. Right, you don't get that in the original. And no. I think I think for me this year, um, when I caught them on a silver blade, it was that's what they wanted. And when I caught them on a painted blade, I had to have a painted blade. You know, and it was uncanny how fishing with two guys in the boat, one guy throwing the painted blade, one guy throwing yeah. a silver blade, and the guy in a silver blade is not getting bit. I mean, not getting bit. I, I made the change to the painted blade. Bam, started catching fish right away. I've seen that a hundred times over. And that's yeah. what when, Jack, when Jack that happens. brings that painted blade to the yeah. to the to the plate. To yeah. the stage. Corbin. Yeah. Uh um jackhammer all day. However, don't sleep on the Project Z because to me, the jackhammer has a big uh we'll just say missing component in its lineup and that is a gold blade i know they make them in golden shiner and i know they make them in brett's bluegill but if you want a shad type color out of the pack out of the pack yeah with a without gold changing blade, anything okay you got to go with that project yeah. C. um i mean if i had to pick i i would definitely go jackhammer only because of the versatility of it but again i mean there's the cost thing too. I mean, yeah, it depends on what you got. I mean, the original you, chatterbait catches fish. Yeah, you there's, can, there's no doubt about it. And, and I mean, one thing I like to do sometimes is pre fish with not a jackhammer and, and tournament fish with a jackhammer, you know, just just do little things like that. If you guys are, are worried about, oh, well, I don't want to. Well, there's another else. player out there too. Oh, Strike King Thunder Cricket. Yeah, that is a heck of a bait. Um, it's overshadowed like every other brand on planet earth is, but that's also a serious player in the, in the game. So that's a great question. Um, and a lot of it comes down to confidence, you know, and it, an individual has yep. in, in a bait. I mean, if you whack them and stack them on the original chatter bait, that's what you're going to throw. That's going to yeah. be your go-to. And you know, you get a lot of color options in the original. Yep. You know? Yep. So there you go. Hope that helped you out. Um, give it a whirl, you know, Fisher originals and and then and then back it up with uh, Jackhammer and, and see what you like. But uh, that's what that's what how we feel about it. Uh, here's a cool question from Mickey. Um, what color crankbait for the river right now? Um, I think that's pretty simple right in our river right now. Now, this is kind of all rivers because they have uh, a great, you know, that have crayfish in them. But ours, we our crayfish molt molt must have been unbelievable because we have tens of billions of crayfish now yes. like like you've never seen before and i would be throwing a crayfish colored crankbait but i would do it in a brown crayfish yes. and i would also do it in a green crayfish because depending on that depth of water and the type of cover they're in they might be shaded a little differently make sure some orange on it yeah there's mm -hmm. there's so many crayfish in the river this year the flatheads couldn't even eat them all yeah I mean, right it's right. crazy man. we were worried about the uh, crayfish uh last year and the year before they just we just didn't have a lot of crayfish uh around but this year they're back they're back in a big way um they're the fish are gorging gorging on them and they're spitting them up all over your boat so um fish a crayfish crankbait Fish anything crayfish and and uh, fish it in a brown pattern and a green pattern uh, with a little touch of orange on there and see uh, see how to produce. I, it I for think you, you got to look at watercolor too, Mike. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know your watercolor, and I don't care if it's the Susquehanna River. We get a we get a ton of Susquehanna River questions here because that's where we're located. But you know, obviously, our viewers and our listeners they fish rivers all over the the country. So, you know, the big thing with a river is it's constantly changing. It's fluctuating. Like, we're having storms now. I'm sure other places are having storms. Uh, if the Wind. area you're fishing has some some big tributaries feeding that are, you know, dirty. Yeah. You know, I'm going to I'm gonna immediately go to a fire tiger or a chartreuse blackback. The fire tiger crankbait in dirty water 
is money. You have to have fire tiger crankbaits in your box or don't take the boat out of the garage. Don't go fishing until you go buy fire tiger crankbaits if the water's going to be dirty. And you have to have chartreuse with a black back. And speaking of the question, it's rivers, tidal rivers, they're always yeah. dingy yeah. unless you're fishing around grass. Guess what? Chartreuse, black back, and fire tiger? Yeah. You got to have that. So you got to take into consideration yeah. water color. Yeah, there you go. Right. There and you and go. your crawfish colors are great in dirty water, too. Just go to a red. Yep. So, so great uh, question. Let's just take one second here and just um, um, – for the people who are just checking in, this is uh, um, this is our Tackle Shop Live question and answer show. We do this uh, once every several weeks. We just stop and you know we we try to get feedback from our viewers uh, with questions that they may have and just answer questions about anything. So anybody just tuning in, you have a question, pop it up on there. We'll try to answer it the best we can, and it doesn't have to be about fishing. It can be about anything, boats trucks tro uh towing um you know personally what we do how we do things um about anything we don't care um we are here to answer questions and all kinds of questions uh and to get back to that we had a, uh, andre was asking if uh he doesn't really fish for smallmouth much wants to come to the susquehanna river uh bass boat friendly piece of water well, Andre, if I was coming up here um, and I had a bass boat right now and knowing what I know about the Susquehanna River, I would go to the Conowinga pool and I would fish the upper end of that pool. And as long as you stay in the buoyed in the buoyed areas and take your time, you don't even have to go far from the boat ramp and you'll be in all the smallmouth you want to want to be in um, and just follow them buoys right around the, the channel. And take your time and don't try to you know think you know where you're going just follow the buoys and you'll get over there into the current and sit there all day long catch all kinds of fish and come back uh and um you know just take your time and get around up there yeah i mean if i was going to conowingo pool for the first time ever and i was going to fish the upper end uh take your time is the is the word yeah. of the day yeah, like, take take your time. Just first of all, you don't really need to go anywhere. You really don't. You just put you know, the trolling motor down and start fishing. You launch at Muddy Creek Boat Access. Yeah. And you start fishing. And yeah. then you kind of idle a little bit. You don't run. You don't run. You idle a little bit and then you fish. And yeah, I, I mean, the the last time I fished a club tournament that we launched out of Muddy Creek Access, uh, I never left sight of the boat ramp. And if, if somebody, uh, wouldn't have, you know, hole jumped me at the end of the day and, and busted a big fish on me, I would have won that tournament right next to the boat. Oh ramp. yeah. Oh yeah. But I got claim jumped. Oh, yeah. I think he's talking about you, Mikey. <laughs> You're being <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, so you don't have to go that's, anywhere. That's what I do. Um, learn a little at a time. Here's a great question right here from, uh, Lisa Lake fish club. I have a question. How was that peanut butter pie? Well, I know uh, that you really didn't have anything to do with it, Mark, but Renee's peanut butter pie, on the other hand, she knows how good that damn thing is, and I'm telling you right now, wow. Wow, 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 wow. Fantastic, as always. So we loved it. Thank you so much, <laughs> Renee. <laughs> uh, yeah, so... Mike, got a question here. Yes, sir. So James Hawk asked this question, but there's been several people... How do you get away from knowledge that you've had in the past when you're going to a body of water? Great you question. ever watch Men in Black? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Done. Man, that's hard to do, man. You know, that's that's called fishing history. And uh, it's one of the hardest things to get away from, especially on local waters. Um, so many people. That's why they. It, it's called the local curse. You know, when these big, yeah. big tournaments go to bodies of water and uh, they, they fish a lot of history. Um, I don't know. It's something you got to work on, though. It's something you got to you got to mentally work on. You have to think it through. You have to fish the day. And that's what we always preach here at Susquehanna Fish and Tackle is you must fish the day. You have to start out with a clean slate every single day and fish the day. And I think that never yeah. never rings true with with local bodies of water and you know going to some place that 
you know, you caught him really good last year. Um, it just never, ever works out. I mean, there's spots that will always have fish on them, but it just never works out. Uh, for me, it's all about discipline. I mean, you got to be disciplined if you're going to do that. I mean, if you're going to go out and you're going to fish the same spot over and over and over again, um, you have to challenge yourself and be disciplined enough to say, I'm not going to do this this time. And I may not catch anything, or I may land on the mother load, or if I throw a worm here, I'm going to throw a crankbait. I mean, you have to push yourself outside of your comfort zone. And, you know, if you're, and that kind of goes to what we were talking about with like diversity and like, you know, being uh, good at multiple techniques and bettering yourself. You know, if, if you're a really good jig fisherman, okay, well then in your top water games league, well, then maybe you need to go fish somewhere else and, and, and work on that. So to me, it's just opening up, the ability to challenge yourself mentally and, and, and think outside the box and be disciplined while you're doing it. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, it does make a lot of sense. And I, I have kind of a, I have kind of a system for that too. Um, I have kind of a system for that too. Yeah. I was dropping a little note to you there. Yeah, I got it. Um, so what I like to do, cause you know, let's face it. We don't all get at, we don't all get away from the house very often. So, you know, what I like to do is I take some time before my trip. I look at the weather. Uh, if I'm fishing tidal water, I look at the tides. If I'm fishing a river, I look at the river level. Is it going up? Is it going down? I look at my gauges. I look at my season. And when I go to that body of water, I kind of start and have a game plan based upon those conditions. Maybe it rained a lot. And my first thought is, well, let me, let me make a little boat run from, you know, here to there and take a look at some watercolor. Do I have some dirty water somewhere? Do I have some clean water somewhere? Um, and let me, let me make a decision. Am I, am I going to start in the dirty water? Am I going to try to put something together there? Am I going to start in the clean water? Am I going to try to put something together there? Obviously, you can't forget that rock or that hump or that um, point that you that you that you fish because it's a, a a fish magnet, right? But try to you know put a game plan together in your head for your even your most you know local water that you fished your whole life on and, and try to just say, okay, today I'm going to follow this game plan. Hey, it's, it's summer, you know, uh, it's been raining or the wind's blowing from an odd direction or, you know, I'm going to try to fish the wind blown bank, uh, that kind of a thing. And if it's not working, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to maybe pick up on a clue that a 12 inch fish gave you and run with that. And that'll kind of drag you off of, you know, just uh, doing the same old, same old, and pretty much getting the same old results. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, the uh, the thing the thing you got to remember is is that you you you, you know, like Corbin said, you got to challenge yourself to go out and try something different. You know, you always got to be fishing, and it's called fishing your gut, and and you'll learn that. You can learn that over time. And when you when you uh, when you your knowledge when your knowledge base grows. As you try these different things, your knowledge base grows. So a lot of people are too narrow-minded because their, their their knowledge base is only narrow. So that's why you listen to the Tackle Shop Live. That's why you watch the tournament shows on TV. That's why you read Bassmaster Magazine. That's why you do all these things. So Bass University is 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 going huge because guys are hungry for the information. And and as that information ex expands your thinking, you can you can now have a gut. You can fish your gut. You can say, oh, man, this is the perfect condition for this. Well, don't don't just sit there and think about it. Yeah. Drop what you're doing and go do it. That's what gut fishing is. It's stopping what you're doing and making that right turn and running in. Like, like, I, like I, that's the way I fish. I mean, I, if I'm doing something and it's not working and I think of something, I go do it right away. I don't even yeah. it, it, right, wrong, or indifferent. You can always undo, do, it. undo that. Fishing on the fly. It's Yeah, absolutely. So, but... The knowledge is so important to have as your base. So don't stop learning. Don't stop, you know, filing all that information and don't stop trying. And, the other, uh, the other thing and, that really helps you really with help that you is before you go and, and, and 
go on that trip the 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 day before or, or, or you know when you're getting prepared go ahead and rig up a variety of your rods you know yep. maybe you're maybe that. you're not a drop shot guy but go ahead and rig that drop shot up because let's say you're not a drop shot guy you know and i'm <laughs> talking to you that every time you're on you know your favorite body of water you're always like man i should go over and drop shot that point and you don't do it for one reason. You don't have a drop shot tied up and you don't want to stop and tie one up. Or you don't have confidence in it. You know, so have one tied up. George, have one George is talking go. about me. You know, I am the well, worst for that, man. Um, I hate to stop fishing. But, but that technique will help you. I know. It will. Having those rods it prepared ahead of time. That. And have things tied up from multiple layers of the water column. I mean, you know, if you guys are fishing anywhere, you need to be able to fish the bottom, fish the top, and something in between. Now, what that is, depending on the body of water, you don't know. But you want to be able to cover yeah. multiple layers of the water. Tie it up. Tie it all on. Yep. Buy more rods from Susquehanna Fishing Tackle. It'll help. It'll help you act on those <laughs> decisions when you're trying to fish fresh on your body of water. <laughs> yep. Yep. We got you covered when it comes to all that. All right. I uh, hope that answered your question. Thanks. Great. Great question. Great question. We have another question here from Emmanuel. What are your recommendations for beginners to get confident in their electronics? Find structure deep and uh, fight the urge to push shallow and beat the bank. Um, man, what a what a great question. That's almost like what we were just talking about. You know, go out and do it. Go out and experiment with your graph and see something on your graph and spend some time going around it and throwing something and dragging through it to see if you can yeah figure out what it is and, tr you know, try to try to fish around it and, and always look for something that one of these days, if you do that, if you just go out and just kind of look around and find something, one of these days, you're going to come on this school of fish on, on this offshore structure. That's going to blow your mind. Yep. And then you get what we call the confidence to, go out and do that more often and, yep. and, and fight that urge a lot easier. What do you got, Nick? Uh, something to go with the electronics there is, you know, the, with the 360 and all that, make sure you calibrate it too, because when you put that 360 on and you think it's straight, go to a piece of structure that you can see yeah. and make sure it's where you think it is, because if it's off at 10 feet, yeah, it's going to be way off yeah. at 80 feet. Exactly. So you got to make sure everything you're doing is pointing exactly where you want. And that's to be. so true, man. That is, we were talking about some stuff before we, in our, in our uh, pre-production meeting, before we went on uh, live here tonight. And one of the things we were talking about was all these electronics and, and the stuff we're learning, how me and George have, are, are scratching the surface on this electronic stuff. And we're in that learning phase with 360 and, um, and pan optics. And we do the same. We're doing that right now. We're trying to figure out what is this and what is that and where is this and where is that at on, on you know, in perspective of our screen. Um, and a lot of times we're we're checking ourselves all the time. How about it right now? Just checking ourselves, uh, trying to figure out the structure. But I'm telling you, if you just go out there and just you know, every so often, just take some time, go out, look for something and throw at it and fish. A, you know, it's really easy. Just put a Carolina rig on or a deep diving crankbait. But you're going to have one of these days where you you just see what it's all about. And you and then you have a great fishing day out there. And then that that confidence will allow you to do it a lot more often. Yep. Yeah. That yeah. answer pretty good. Yeah. And here's here's another thing too. go with somebody else. I mean, don't laugh, but like go with some like I mean, don't always take your boat. Go with somebody else. Go salt great, water fishing. Great. Go, go saltwater fishing. Because them guys know how to use their electronics. Oh, and they'll show yes. you the difference between this is this size fish, this is this size fish. I mean, expand your horizons. Don't yeah. don't get caught in, you know, this what I'm gonna That's call, a great point, Corbin. You know, go outside your lane, bro. You know, switch lanes on 95. Don't stay in your lane the whole time and get run over. That's well, a that, that's a great a, point. There's a couple things about electronics that you have to to do to gain any sort of confidence in your graphs. First of all, you know, today, even your most basic unit is going to have 2D and down imaging. Most people are buying a unit that has 2D down and side imaging. So you really have to learn both 2D and the, the imaging. And 
obviously imaging is way easier. A tree looks like a tree. Yeah. Um, so one of the things I like to do is, is don't be afraid to mess with your settings, you know, on your 2d, you know, go into your sensitivity, you know, get your boat in 20 feet of water, um, or get your boat in, you know, 10 feet of water, uh, something not too deep and, Bang that sensitivity up until you start getting a slight amount of a echo. So if you're in 10 foot of water, you're going to start seeing a repeat of the bottom in 20 foot. Mm -hmm. Now, you, you know, now you're close. Don't be afraid to do that. You can always go back, right? You know, default. on your, on your imaging. What do they call that? Reset. Default. Default. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you screw it up, it could be fixed. Oh yeah. No problem. <laughs> um, you know, on your, on your, uh, imaging, you know, it's the contrast. You know, so you're going to, you're going to, don't be afraid to mess with your contrast. A lot of these units have the choice between two different or three different, um, for lack of a better term, you know, pallets, uh, power levels, like, you know, two or three different, you know, hertz settings. What's your, what's your, what you're putting out. So don't be afraid to toggle back and forth. If somebody tells you that, you know, this, this setting is for deep water. Yeah, nothing's going to blow up if you try it in shallow water. And if it looks better to you, then it's okay. Now, and then yeah. what Mike said, you know, find something that, you know, look at it on those graphs. And here's one last thing on this topic. Join a Facebook group. Hummingbird has, you know, a great one. Mm -hmm. Garmin has yeah. one that is all about panoptics. And all these guys do is talk about, Pan optics. And they somebody, put the pictures up pictures. here. They put pictures they up got here. Pictures. They, 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 show they, you. they Somebody will say, hey, I'm having problems with this. And all these guys come in and they're like, you know, set this at this, set this at this, set this at yeah. this. It's going to do this for you. Yeah. Um, and just a little at a time learning. Yeah. It, it, great, it's great it's pretty easy to use. I got one. Well, oh, go ahead. No, you go ahead. Now. All right. One more quick thing. Just remember, too, this new electronics takes more amperage than ever before, too. So you yeah. need to make sure that you have the right batteries and the right setup yeah. because you'll be a sitting duck. Oh, otherwise. that's terrible. Yeah, it's all about the installation. Like, I'd like to give one other tip to the viewers yeah. that um, you and I happened to be on the main river the day when uh, we learned it from, um, <clears throat> I'm not going to say any names, but uh, make sure your graph is not in simulator mode. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> make sure that your craft yeah. is not in simulator. Well, right? wasn't me. And, yeah. and, it wasn't and, me. And, and to be fair, it was not, uh, you know, it We're was somebody else's boat that, again, somebody was outside their comfort zone, jumped on, <laughs> yeah. and uh, the exact word was, oh, my God, look, look at, at all this. these fish. We're on them, boys. Why can't we catch these damn things? <laughs> and our buddy from Real, Real Perfection jumps up there, Joey, and goes, well, that's because it's on simulator. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. Yep. That was awesome. So there you are. I hope that helps you out a little bit. And uh, that was a great question. Um, here's a neat little question. Mike Barr, longtime uh, listener and watcher and a customer of the shop. Um, what uh, what line? How heavy a line do you like to throw, Corbin, for um, uh, spinner baits um, in heavy wood? Oh, yeah, wood fishing. Oh. What line are you throwing? Depends on how big a fish you're around. Uh, Typically. I'm, I, I mean, <laughs> what the hell? I, wait a minute. We're, wait. Is this going to be a chapter three answer? Or, yeah, yeah. Or, I'm going to give you three. I mean, is, is the barometric There's pressure seven coming pounders on here? that tree? I got to change my line. Hang oh, yeah. On. Hold on. <laughs> yeah. Power pole down. Get the bulk spools oh, out. Oh, wait. Yeah. Power yeah. pole down. I mean, I'm Because we can't spot lock because nope, we don't have that yeah, on our bed. Nope, we always bought the power poles. <laughs> yeah. But. You better watch yourself when that 15 pound high seas comes out, man. I'm going 15. I don't. I don't like to go heavier. I mean, I, again, you got to get the bites to land them. Um, yeah, shallow water, wood cover, heavy kind of cover. 15 will get the job done for you most times. Um, for for I think what we all do, I think 15 will get get it done real good for you. I'm so I'm impressed with 15. I'm fishing a lot of 15 on a chatter baits too, where I would normally fish braid. And I'm impressed with it. I'm I'm I'm, um, I'm learning. I'm well, Mike, the only thing I would tell you, Mike Barr, I know you fish a lot of tidal water, um, and where you fish, there's a lot of barnacles. Um, so when I'm fishing spinnerbait on heavy wood and tidal water, it's 20 all day long. 
Everywhere else, it's 15. Uh, Steve Myers, I, I, it's not a question, but I hate fishing marinas. Yeah, we all do. We hate flipping docks, hate fishing marinas, but you got you got to do it. You got to do don't it. Don't speak for everybody. Yeah. Some people like flipping docks and fishing marinas. Hmm. It's fun. Yeah, yeah, we do it because we. I do it because I have to. The the person on the back of the boat might not like it a whole well, lot. Exactly. But, that's uh, their thing. Well, it's a lot of work. I mean, fishing marinas are a lot of freaking work. I don't care, man. It you're, is. you're And if your casting game isn't on, and that's normally why you hate marina fishing because your casting game is is not there um that's on you uh, well no i'm good i'm good at casting no uh, i'm saying that's, that's on that yeah that's on that yeah. person yeah i just don't like fishing because it's a lot of work and and it's a lot of work for you know the results for me i mean i've had great days doing it but not many not many i mean you pick a fish here you pick a fish there you flip you know seven thousand poles and you finally get bitten and you miss it because you were sleeping Maybe you should have taken an extra coffee shot in the morning. I know, I know what you're saying, Steve. I know what you're saying. I feel your pain, but you got to do it. Uh, what else we got here? James Hawk says his boat's black. It sucks to be you. This kind of heat, bro. Mm hmm. Bet you're burning your feet off on that one. Sweating bullets. Mm hmm. Sauna time. Oh, and you know what? Um, you know what? Ben Buckhunter did, uh, um, uh, mentioned earlier in, in the program. What? Rattle uh, trap. Guess what Cox motor was this weekend? What? Trolling motor. Oh, all tracks probably. Spot lock, baby. Yeah. Mm. Spot lock. Yeah. So it's Oops. not it's not like that's all he does. Oops. So uh well that's check, hey, check your information. Fact checking. Fact he's checking. Just saying he's used it before. Oops. He's used it before. <laughs> uh Andre C clear uh harness, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Made a humongous difference in the Ab picture. Absolutely. To, uh, to, big shout out to Seaclear. Yes. If you want the picture that you see in all the magazines, you must have clean power to your units. Clean power. Exactly. Exactly. Then you'll start seeing the stuff that you read that your magazines are, are or or what's printed on the friggin' boxes. Yeah. Uh let's see. How's those stripers doing at Marburg? I don't know. We don't fish for stripers there, but they are catching some there. <laughs> uh oh this is a good one um zach plank uh can you touch a little more on what the water levels and pressure changes does man i like that question. And what it does to the fish now i like that question now that's a that's that is that's a, next level that's a next level fishing question right next there. level next level great great question zach well Water levels, I'll talk about water levels. George could talk about pressure, and Corbin can talk about both. Um, but water levels affects the fish immensely. Um, most fish, as the water rises, will follow the water. So um, I think there was a tournament in Texas where the water was was real high, and the, and the, and the fish went inside. You mean the classic? That was a classic? <laughs> um it could have been a classic yeah I mean, whatever that, uh that I, happens a lot on rayburn too yeah i think i think it was a classic when it was classic it, yeah. yeah the classic was high um so the fish kind of followed the water up but they didn't follow it as far as they they could have you know but i guarantee you those guys like myself i would have went in all the way to the bank to follow that water to the bank first and then back myself out until i found them but uh i don't know how i got pushed off on that but what normally you follow water the fish will follow the water up and they'll stay there when the water's up but as soon as the water changes a little bit they will retreat in in mass exodus now the key here is to figure out how far they're going to retreat to on our river when the water starts to drop they will pull all the way out to the old uh edge of the river so that may be um, five feet in some areas where it's a steep bank, or it might be 40 feet on a flat bank where they might pull way out and they'll move big distances. So you got to kind of play with the bank level, you know, with the water comes up like this, or if it's flat, when the water comes way back like this. So you, you, you play with that level, but follow the fish up. But when the water starts to drop, you better be ready to start moving like crazy and heading back out the other way. So, um, 
that's how you plan that. And then what's nice about that is they really they really get on a certain type of structure. They'll get on a bush. Uh, then you can just go flip bushes. They'll get on a, a tree pattern. Then you just go flip trees. Or they'll and, or they'll get on the old bank. Or as, as it starts dropping. Well, that's what I'm saying. When it, when they start yeah. dropping, they'll go they'll all the way out to the. They'll get on the old bank. The old bank that you need to go and to. And that can be awesome. And that can be really awesome. Yeah. So that's that's how I would handle uh, water changes. And, and now pressure, George. Yeah. Well, pressure pressure is tricky. Uh, and there's two parts of it that are tricky. The the best case scenario um, is a falling barometer. And if you can if you can be there as that as that drop is occurring, you're going to have good fishing. The tricky part is is doing that. You know, if there's a cold front coming in, as that front enters your area, that pressure is going to drop, that barometer is going to drop, and that bite's going to go wild. The problem is that timing of that. Yeah. Um, and a lot of it just happens to be dumbass luck that you were there when it happened because it doesn't happen <laughs> like uh, the weatherman says it's going to happen. So generally speaking, a falling barometer, your fish are going to be more aggressive. Therefore, your techniques are going to be more aggressive. You're going to find you know, that great crankbait bite. You're going to find that great spinnerbait bite and so on and so forth. And conversely, on a real high barometer, uh, post front, you know, the first two days after a cold front uh, is high pressure. High pressure, everybody says bluebird skies. Right. You know, that can have the opposite effect on the fish. Um, I mean... It depends on the kind of water you're fishing, whether it's a lake or a river. I'll tell you this much right now, and I think this is really important about pressure. I, I know Corbin will agree with me. You're better off if you have a – your day off coincides with a big high pressure after a major front. You're better off picking a river or a tidal water to fish than you are a lake. Yeah. Because at least you have current, yep. which is an equalizing factor. Yep. You know what I'm saying, Corbin? Yep, absolutely. Um, so the pressure – and and I would encourage you all to pay attention to that stuff. Yeah. You know, kind of again, when you're prepping for your trip, you know, you need to be you need to be on your phone, you need to be on a weather station of your choice that you use consistently. If you're fishing a big body of water, you need to be looking at the marine forecast. And and not the land forecast. Yeah, Zach. Um and I think for the ant to also throw in here because your question was about what it does to the fish. When you have a a good bite and the pressure is not a high pressure, but a low pressure. Falling. A falling <laughs> pressure. The strike area is bigger on a fish. Okay. So they become easier to catch. They're more act active. They'll chase further. They're, you know, you don't have to make that perfect cast. Um, to catch those fish, but on a high pressure, this the strike area on a fish gets real tiny and small. Strike window, and your strike window is much smaller. So it, you know, that's when 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 the when it's tough, when it's tough fishing, it that's because you can't you're you're not getting into that strike window as easy. Correct, Corbin? Yeah. And so you know that's why. Uh, when 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 I fish high pressure, I like to go to, to to specific structure and fish specific thicker type of structure that you can make these excellent targeted casts to where you think the fish should be, and then that jig will have a better chance of getting down to where that fish really is. Right. Because in you know, a high pressure, they'll they'll go tight to cover. Yeah, and and it kind of it, it becomes it becomes your better casting guys will start catching them because they're dropping it in those windows, and maybe they're letting it soak in that window a little longer. Um, Good point. It, kind, it kind of shut it they'll still eat but they they really shut down small their window is very small but on a low yep. low uh dropping pressure like george is saying they're more aggressive the, yeah. the, their window is very aggressive man top water fantastic the spinnerbait bite Crank. is good the cranking's out off the charts the jerk bait bites like you know you threw it in it uh, should be and you see them coming for you know oh, i saw this fish he came 20 feet for that's man that was it that, yeah. that that was great conditions absolutely what, what do you have to add to that, Corbin? 
So the biggest thing with water fluctuations, especially on a river system, um, is it changes the current flow and it changes the current seams and places where there is no current, current becomes. And I'm talking about a couple inches of, of a rise. Um, you know, different ledges will flow different ways and you'll have bigger pockets here and not so much here. And all those things, what that does is it changes the bait. Um, the bait's going to follow the current seam. The bait's going to go, you know, if you get some rising water, it's not maybe that the fish are going to go to the bank if it's not too far of a rise, but maybe they're going to go from being in the grass or the outside grass to the inside grass line. Um, little things like that are going to make a big difference. And, um, you know, that to me is, is, is just one of the things you got to look at because with the high pressure, it coincides with the fluctuating water levels. And if I'm going to fish, you know, bluebird skies, you know, don't be afraid to go get in some current if you're river fishing or, or fish really, really, uh, yeah. You know, yeah. Deeper flats with the, with a long cast. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, um, now we, we're getting a lot more questions now. Uh, we're at 144 right now. We got to kind of start winding this down. Um, James Hawks asking, do you like a DC reel or one with conventional braking systems? It's a good question, James. Um, I like the DC reels. I'm not in love with the DC reels, but I like the DC reels. Um, they, uh, they throw really far. You know what I'm saying? And, and I think in some situations they actually throw way too far. They allow you to throw too far. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, in some situations, but, um, it's, uh, I think, I think, I think what happened to the DC was people, people thought it was one thing and it was actually something else. I, I agree with that. Yeah. They, with they, that. they thought it was a, a no, a no brainer type of a, of a Correct. casting system. They, they thought it was almost like a push button Zebco yeah. for bait casting. Yeah. I think and a lot of people got confused on that, yeah. uh, but I really like the speed of the reel for all, you know, all the casting that you can do and the accuracy that you can get out of it. You can get a, a, a ton of accuracy out of it. Um, the conventional braking system is still simple to set up. It's, uh, you know, it's, I think it's a lot easier for, um, you know, different conditions like wind and, 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 um, that kind of stuff to, 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 to dial out of your, your cast. Um, one over the other, you know, if I had to pick one, I probably would take the conventional style setup reels. You know, I, I just think they're, I think they're, they're versed, they're more versatile or easier to throw in, in, in most of the situations. So, uh, that, that's my two cents. I, the DC is great. There's guys that come in and buy multiple of them. They love them, yep. you know, because that's the way they cast, you know, and it's, yep. And it's uh, and it's beauty. It is a beautiful casting reel, um, but but I think for a guy who wants an all around reel that can do everything great, I think I would stay with the regular conventional casting systems, the centrifugal weights, the the SV systems, MGL, um, you know, MGL spool, um, you know, that kind of stuff is is uh, still, I mean, right there. Um, but if you have that ability to, you know. Uh, uh, you know, and you and you like that really super fast kind of on the edge type of spool. That DC man is just it's amazing. It, it throws amazing. It 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 does a lot of great stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I use them a lot. I I really like them. I fish both the SLX and the Corrado DC. Mm -hmm. And one of the benefits I like I like of them is if I'm on a body of water where I'm transitioning back and forth from uh, casting a jig, for example, or pitching a jig. Um, you know, when I get up on a bank and I want to flip like a, 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 a series of docks or lay downs, I just click that knob from two to one. Yeah. And I'm, I'm set up perfectly for pitching and flipping. And then if I want to transition out and swim my jig or cast my jig to a, a, a target or, or drag it through a grass bed or something, mm -hmm. I'll just bang it up to two where I can cast. Yep. Um, and so for me, it's, it's very efficient. Yeah. Um, and, and what the, to, 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 to Corbin and Mike's point, a lot of people 
you know, who didn't have the benefit of the pro shop experience were kind of misled by factors outside of everyone's it was it was control the, the youtube stuff videos you know, people, people showing off yeah. throwing the jig against the wall yeah the backlash yeah. as hard as you can yeah. i think the, the best way to put it is if you can cast a conventional bait casting reel uh proficiently you will excel with dc yeah that's that's exactly right and if you struggle with bait casting yeah the reel is not your problem right you need some training. You need to you need to properly learn your mechanics. You know if you're, you know if you're swinging your arm, full extension on every cast. You you need to you need an intervention on your casting. And once you get your mechanics down, then every reel you have is going to perform well. And then you will really enjoy, you know, per, let's say for example a DC reel. Yeah. So. Um that was a great, great question. That was I hope, a great I, hope question. I, I hope that helps you, helps you out a little bit. So we'll answer any kind of question, reels, rods, whatever it is. That was a great question. Um, boy, I tell you what, Corbin, everybody knows knows a lot about you. They're wishing you a happy birthday already. Oh yeah, Antonio, go go yeah. Gomez, yeah, Don Roder, yeah, a couple other people chimed in there and said happy birthday to Corbin, which is July third, right? Yep, two days from now. Yep, two days from now, Corbin's big birthday. Greatness. And it, and of course, he'll have the birthday bash up at the on the main river at the lower July, July Suites. 10th, yeah, yeah. He always has a great, great deal going yeah. on. So to celebrate it, but uh, yeah, happy, happy, happy early thanks, birthday, thanks, Corbin. man. Thanks, yeah, man. There you, you know. go, buddy. Uh, so we're gonna keep moving on here. Um, appreciate tonight all the great questions. It's really neat to have uh, all the different various questions thrown out. It, it, I think it's a lot of fun. I think you learn a lot. Um, I think it's fun to answer the questions. I think it's fun to ask the cool questions and see and see. Uh, Let's do know, another a, one in the fall. Different, huh? Let's do another one of these in the fall. Oh, no, no, no. We're not going to wait that long. Uh, next oh. month, right? Next month. I think it's very engaging. Yeah. I love it. Awesome. Yeah. We do it every every couple of weeks. So um, we'll probably be about a month from now and and we'll uh, be looking looking at another another uh, uh, question and answer uh, set, uh, setting. Set, uh, for you guys to ask questions and um as always you can always come in the shop here and poke our uh, pick our brains and you can call us up on the phone and ask some questions we're always here available to help you guys catch more fish and to help you out with any any kind of questions you may have um so some exciting stuff happening here at the shop exciting uh we finally get to see some baits that we long long awaited and they came in today and that is the Strike King, ladies and gentlemen, hybrid hunters are in the house. Not all the colors. Once again, it doesn't matter if it's whatever color. It doesn't <laughs> matter. We got something. Yeah. It's unbelievable. They actually are making them. They're, they're, they're available again. There's a few colors here in the shop. George is loading them on the website. That's like stock, man. Uh, but there's the hybrid hunter. This is the bigger size. And we got some couple of the smaller size in uh we have we got those today so you'll see those up on the website here tonight or tomorrow um you know the, the, the stock amounts will be loaded up in there but you can go ahead and order some of those get them while you can because who in the hell knows when we're going to get any more of those but uh also george you have a list of some stuff that we were long awaiting and uh piles of it came through the door yeah, um, yeah and, we got some really big shipments in yeah this and, I and i saw another one that was really huge today was the saint croix rods um yeah. we got a nice selection of st croix rods uh for you guys that don't know people are coming in our and, and i don't know we, we me and george don't get around too much but it's what we hear people are coming in our shop and they're going oh my god you guys have rods no apparently nobody has rods we have thousands i mean on display there's got to be thousands. A thousand rods put that camera over there nick there's thousands of them thousands there's, you know, so there's, there's well, there's thousands more now. Yeah. And there's a ton in the back. So we got plenty of rods for you guys to, to choose from a lot of actions. There's, um, you know, there's all, all the different brands. But today we did get a really nice selection of St. Croix. Some of the models we haven't seen for the while uh, for a while. Um, some avid rods came through the door. Some tournament rods, uh, legend tournament rods came through the door. Another big selection of the, mo the famous Mojo Bass rods came through the door. 
So uh, don't be got, patting yourself on the back, Saint Croix. Yeah, no, it wasn't that impressive. Yeah, we, we're still. I mean, you only had a year. Yeah, plus we're still waiting oh, on some. We still had some backwards, but Legend Glass got a couple Legend Glass rods in, which is nice to see. Yeah, how about, how about um, Victory? Yeah, Victory, they're here. So there's a lot of lot of stuff there that that uh, that we got. We got a few G Loomis rods in, and we got some Shimano stuff. So um, yeah, we got a few of the um, we, Corrado. Uh, we got some. We got some Shimano in. We got what was that new Corrado? The what, the the. I don't really want to break that reel down tonight, but we are. We do have Corrado BFSs in. That's going to be for next week. Yep. We're gonna yep. we're gonna talk about that next week. But there is uh, some here. There's some here in the shop. Yep. You don't right want to now. wait around we'll, and get grab a hold of them. We're not going to screw it with that tonight. But next week we'll get into that because that is a whole new deal. Yep. Yep. We're gonna need to go. I know. Strike that, King. That bad boy's gonna have to go up on the lift in the shop. For yeah. you next week. Rapala. Big Strike King order this week. Big Strike King order. Skid. Yep. Big Rapala. Big Spro Gamagatsu order. Skid. You know what was interesting? I'm talking a, now a Skid Nick. of Gamagatsu hooks. Yeah. That's a lot of damn hooks. Yeah. Nick, the Strike King came in, came in in this tractor trailer, right? It comes rolling up in here, and this guy opens up the trailer, and there's just, there's, you know, Skids, there's Skids on there. And we're like, oh man, this, this beautiful packaged like like crate box. It was like a cardboard crate like, with a lid on top and straps going over top of the lid. And um, and the guy slides it to the back of the uh, the trailer. And normally we cut the, the the thing off, take the lid off, and there's a bunch of boxes. You know, there might be a box with tw twenty boxes inside. You know, so <laughs> George is, and I usually unload the trucks. George is usually, you know, doing his thing or whatever. And but George is back here and and Mike Mikey pulls, they cut the thing and they open it up. And here it is, all individual boxes inside of this huge crate. There's like a thousand loose boxes <laughs> in this crate. And George is like, what the hell is this? Time to get a fork truck. <laughs> oh my God. And then we, you know, so time to get some new employees. So me and George, King. so the, it, was, it took four of us to lift this thing off and set it there. And it was threatening to rain. So we were like, how are we going to get all this shit out of this thing? And inside before one it box raining. at a time, it was unbelievable, man. We had a, so they, and, uh, they apologize. And they, their, their thing was they have, you know, some, some part-time packers, that uh i would send them packing yeah <laughs> you know so it was pretty it was pretty <laughs> funny man it was like what the hell is this and, and normally we got it get, in we, we got it in without without it getting wet and uh normally when you get well. a big order in from strike king it's like the most beautifully beautiful packed pack. every box has its own list and everything is like they have somebody that must oversee that well that guy must have been off he gone. He was. It was bad. So yeah, big order of Strike King. Gamagatsu. Um, I love seeing that stuff. Hybrid hunters, as Mike pointed out. Your hybrid hunters. Spro Gamagatsu, and I mean like not a little bit. And a lot of it. I mean like a skid. Yes, yeah, so we got a lot of that stuff in. Uh, got a bunch of Shimano, including the Corrado BFS, which we will break down next yep. week. We got a uh, pretty significant Rapala order mm -hmm. in. Yep, I saw that. DT's up in the house. In the hizzy. And we got oh. from our good friends at G-Crack. Lord have mercy. I didn't think you were going to bust this out yet. Oh, we're busting. I wanted one more week of that so I could fish it at the next tournament. We have the Bayobab EX. Yeah. Aren't they some fancy boys with their names out? So this is the Frito Lay uh, flipping bait, because when you open up a bag of G Crack, it's it smells like Fritos. It's like, it definitely smells like Fritos. Uh, this is a up and coming Japanese bait company. They uh, they market and affiliate and work with Hayabusa. So these guys got their A game on. They're responsible for a lot of awesome products and. You know, we've talked about them in the past. They have some very unusual products. This is one of these baits that people, hardcore people are aware of. But probably this time next year, everybody's going to be aware of. Yeah, so you can get you can get a jump on on everybody right now. Like some of these guys with that Bellows Gill, man, are smashing them. Yeah. Smashing them. So this is the Bayo Bab. Okay. Now, this one here, I think they pretty much said, yo, Gary Yamamoto, we see you. 
<laughs> because this one's called the yam stick. Yeah, that's right. Y-A-M. But this is pretty cool. This is a 4.8 inch yam stick um, with their powerful scent. And it's got that little teaser dagger Japanese. tail. That's a Japanese thing. Little quivering tail. This thing is bad to the bone. Pretty so sweet. that's the yam stick. And then since everybody went off the reservation on red this year uh not to be outdone they did their bellows get uh, bellows crawl and they also did their bellows gill which is the bait that made them famous in that color in that red they call it uh, uh you're not gonna be able to read lv it. solar flare <laughs> <laughs> love it so you got we got the solar flash you got red on one side orange on the other and you got orange on the other and the crawl is no different you got the little this is the little bellows crawl which this bad boy right here is like crazy deadly you got the the solar flare so solar flare bayo bab hog yam stick Matt's got it looking awesome yeah. on our G crack page. Yep. It's in the house. It is as with most of G cracks product in somewhat of limited quantities. They were, they were uh, very benevolent to us and, 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 and gave us some, some decent quantities. They hooked us up pretty good. And there's more on order. Yep. So um, wanted Saint, to put that out to you. St. Chris, uh, John, little John's in the new copper green shag color. I don't know. They might be in those boxes. They're hanging on the wall. Oh, oh, they are hanging on the wall. Yeah, they've been in stock all year. Okay, yeah, we got all those in. Uh, I didn't know if there was. We had a color out of stock, but uh, you can see them on our. Um, them, they should be on our website. If they're not, you can, I don't think all the new colors. Yeah, are he loaded might not, up. They might not be all loaded up on the website, but we you, got them. You can call us. Uh, we'll have them. Um, so we carry yes. every color they make. Andre, uh, George got another little blast of Zoom coming. Uh, Zoom's still a little slow. Uh, getting stuff so we're pick we're hunting and pecking he got a little bit better blast on the way should be here next week sometime i'm not sure what's going to be in that uh, but but uh keep checking our website yeah uh, so we, that's what i got for you that. sports fans there you go um so Get it while it's hot up in here there you have it guys uh as always thank you so much for stopping by and uh spending your your evening with us we enjoy the hell out of it corbin Absolutely. thank you so yeah, much no brother problem, it was man. a great show i appreciate you nick we appreciate you very much for coming out here and helping us out, Nick. Uh, George did a, did an excellent job again, and of course, I was always awesome. And uh, <laughs> I will see you guys, yeah, the next time on Tackle Shop Tackle Live. Shop Live. Catch you around. Sunny day, oh, right there you took my breath away. A oh, young and pretty, you was it just a dream? The next day you called me up, you told me I'm your little buttercup. You came over and you fell into my arms. Well, I know what I feel. Please tell me your love is real. You make me smile when I think of you. If I Running down my neck I'm going crazy from just the thought of you